rise for the national anthem. You may be seated. Dr. Kalenda, stage party, faculty, most importantly graduates, parents, spouses, family and friends, I'm so pleased to welcome you to the 48th School of Nursing graduation convocation. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Shelton, Interim Dean of the School of Nursing. Let me take a moment at the beginning to introduce the stage party. Would you please stand when I call your name to be recognized and we'll hold applause until all are introduced. Dr. Christopher Kalenda, Chancellor of the Health Sciences Center. Dr. Georgia Nar Savage, our commencement speaker. Dr. Joy Maramba, School of Nursing Alumni Association representative. Dr. Alvita Nathaniel, who will be hooding a doctoral degree recipient today. Dr. Susan McCrone, who will also be hooding doctoral degree recipients. Members of my administrative council present today are Dr. Deborah Shelton, Associate Dean for Research. Dr. Cynthia Persley, Associate Dean for Graduate Practice Programs. Dr. Roger Carpenter, Chairperson of the Morgantown Department. Dr. Martha Summers, Vice Chairperson, Clinical Track of the Morgantown Department. Dr. Kari San Jacklin, Vice Chairperson, Teaching Track of the Morgantown Department. Dr. Susan Newfield, Vice Chairperson, Tenure Track of the Morgantown Department and Misty Wolden McKyle, Assistant Dean for Student and Alumni Affairs. A dean could not have a more effective, responsive, and committed administrative council than I do, so please join me in thanking them for all of their work. <laughs> Seated on the side of the stage are faculty members of the School of Nursing, they are truly the people most responsible for the education of our students and the successes that they achieve. They are very dedicated, knowledgeable, experienced, and I thank them for all they do for our students and for the school. Faculty, will you play, please stand and be recognized. It's an exciting day in university life when men and women who come to the institution seeking higher learning and in our case, preparation for a profession, have completed the challenge and are ready for the recognition the university confers with the awarding of a degree. For the class of 2013, many of whom are at, at our graduation ceremony this year, 85 young women and men completed the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, Two RNs will receive their BSN degree. 39 will be awarded the Master of Science in Nursing. 
five students will be recognized for completion of postmaster certification. Seven students will receive the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree, and two have completed their PhD in nursing. Additionally, we have 30 young men and women anticipated to receive their Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree and 99 RNs who are anticipated to receive their BSN degree in August of 2013. BSN graduates today will receive the official school pin and also as they leave the stage, our alumni coordinator, Michelle Wengren and her assistants will present each graduate with a gift from the school. We hope that you will enjoy this very special program as much as we do each year. We would also like to welcome those who are viewing the ceremony live on the webcast from around the world. Please don't forget to visit memories.wvu.edu to share and relive precious mountaineer moments as you embark on a new chapter in your lives. Enjoy graduate profiles, videos, photos, and social media like The Code, which is a collection of your personal goodbyes, traditions, and memories. We're proud to celebrate the class of 2013's accomplishments, memories, and dreams via this website. It's especially appropriate on this Armed Forces Day that we recognize graduates who have served this nation with valor and sacrifice. The red, white, and blue cords these students wear today are tributes to their selfless service, and we also honor faculty and staff who have served. Let's thank them all for the dedication and commitment they and their families have given. And I'd like to ask all veterans in the audience and who are students and who are faculty and staff to please stand so that we can thank you. I would now like to call Dr. Kalenda to the podium to bring his greetings. Please help me welcome him. Thank you, Betty. On behalf of West Virginia University and the Robert C. Byrd Health Science Center, all the faculty and students and staff, I want to bring greetings to all in the audience and thank you for being here today. Our graduates, of course, are the center of attention today, and we salute them for what they have accomplished, but more importantly, we, we, we salute you for the work that you are about to begin and the impact that you will have on the health and lives of thousands of people that you will serve. I also want to welcome and recognize those who have made these graduate achievements possible, the parents, grandparents, spouses, children, siblings, and friends who are here today to share this moment of celebration. Your contribution to their success is incalculable. They appreciate it, and so do we. And I would like the students to stand and turn to the audience and thank those in the audience that have helped you get to this point here. I, too, would like to uh, acknowledge the importance of Armed Forces Day here and, and to add my uh, grateful thanks for those of you who have served. But the red and white and blue cord that uh, graduates and faculty uh, wear today who have served in the Armed Forces was an idea that originated here in the School of Nursing. Gina Miyako, Sam Cotton, and Betty Shelton thought this idea up as a way to celebrate service to the country and service to the profession. And my hope and expectation is that this tradition will be part of West Virginia University's tradition 50 years from now. So I want to thank Sam, I want to thank Gina, and I want to thank Betty for your, in, for your ingenuity and your commitment to this country. So it says here that I'm sp Chancellor's supposed to have inspirational words. You all won't remember what I say, so I'll be, I'll be quick. <laughs> a 
Last year, uh, I, I, I spoke a little bit about qualities and characteristics of uh, leadership uh, from then an acquaintance and now a colleague who was the director of leadership training at the United States Military Academy at West Point, Eric Kale, and he's since come down to West Virginia University and we hope to provide a, a scholarly research experience between our group and, and, and his group up at, at West Point. But one of the things that Eric has uh, put forth in terms of looking at the character of leadership is, is predicated upon six principles, and those principles are integrity, moral courage, selflessness, empathy, collaboration, and self-reflection. But all of us now are moving into health systems in which high-performance teams are going to make the, the outcomes of our patients a lot better. And each of us will be valued members of that team. And how do the characteristics of individual character traits map to those, those traits in a team that will allow for successful clinical care? We know, how many have read anything by Chris Warner or Don Shemensky's uh, work on high altitude leadership? Anybody? It's a fascinating book. It's these guys who go up on top of mountains. So you've got to have teamwork or you fall off the mountain. But over and over, research has, of successful teams has shown that how teams behave predict their success. And from these authors' perspective, successful teams have six characteristics of, of, of behaviors. Respect for each other, recognition of each other's contributions, a sense of belonging and, and identification with the team, freedom within the team to be able to be innovative, the opportunity for an individual within the team to experience personal growth, and for the team to have meaning that is a sense of purpose. And I can think of no better example of meaning than the health professional teams that we all participate in in delivering, delivering health care. So if you meet these needs as, as future team leaders and leaders of teams, you'll see remarkable self-efficacy of the team. And so as you move into your role as nurse professionals, think about the role that you will play in building high-performance teams. From the personal perspective of character, of integrity, moral courage, selflessness, empathy, collaboration, and reflection, and map those qualities into your team's performance of respect, recognition, sense of belonging, freedom, personal growth, and meaning, you will be able to accomplish much in your careers. So remember, motivate yourselves by the mission of service. Unite yourselves by the core visions and the core values of your humanity. And always be proud, always be proud that you're a mountaineer and an alumnus of West Virginia University. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kalenda. Before I introduce our speaker, I'd like to say a few words just to the graduates. First, I want to congratulate all of you on your wonderful achievements. I know that it was not an easy road to travel, but I think you'll find that it was well worth the effort. Regardless of whether you've earned a PhD, a DNP, an MSN, or a BSN, you've completed a rigorous curriculum that has prepared you to become an excellent researcher, practitioner, or clinician, working to improve the quality of life for all for whom you care. Whether your practice is in the hospital, clinic, or community, you will touch thousands of lives and thousands of hearts as you practice the art of nursing. As Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Nursing is a physically and mentally challenging profession but there's no other profession that is as rewarding or provides the opportunities day in and day out to make a lasting impact on those that we serve. 
To the families and friends of the graduates, I want to say thank you. Your support and encouragement have made a tremendous difference in how these graduates have done to ensure their success. They will continue to need your support as they face the challenges of a physically and emotionally difficult but infinitely gratifying profession. Graduates, we congratulate you and we ask you to remember that you are members of our most caring profession and that whatever road you choose in nursing, you practice with love and respect for your patients and families. I would now like to introduce our commencement speaker, Dr. Georgia Narsavage. Dr. Narsavage was Dean of the WVU School of Nursing from June 2007 through December 2012. She's currently Professor of Nursing at WVU and the Director of the Interprofessional Education for the Health Sciences Center. Prior to coming to WVU, she was Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at the Medical College of Georgia, Associate Dean for Academic Programs at the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing at Case Western Reserve, and Associate Dean at the University of Scranton. Dr. Narsavage is a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing and a distinguished practitioner of the National Academy of Practice in Nursing. She earned a BSN from the University of Maryland's Walter Reed Army Institute of Nursing, an MSN from Misericordia University, and a PhD from the University of Pennsylvania. She also uh, earned a certificate as an adult nurse practitioner from Case Western Reserve. Dr. Narsavage has an international reputation as an expert in caring for older patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and lung cancer in community settings. Her extensive research, which has been published, has focused on strategies for keeping people out of the hospital by managing chronic diseases. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Narsavage to the podium. Thank you. I think I could sit down now, right? <laughs> Welcome graduates, families, friends, and colleagues. It's truly a pleasure to speak to you here today on this very special occasion. Out of all the many ceremonies that are held at a university, this one, more than any other, expresses the character and the fulfillment of the mission of WVU. It exemplifies our nursing programs, access and success. You are the success. It's particularly gratifying to be able to share this day with my faculty colleagues and administrators who are the reason that you're here today, with our dedicated staff who continually help us, and with you, the students, and your family and friends. It's your success we're celebrating today and the nursing school class of 2013 has produced graduates with the bachelor's degrees, the master's degrees, and two doctoral degrees. It's just phenomenal to be here with you. And graduation ceremonies are a time both for celebration and for us to give thanks. I'm truly thankful to, be, to have been invited to speak to you all as I complete my years as your dean and move into the new role at WVU Health Science Center. My husband Peter and I came here in 2007 and are truly enjoying our adopted state. In fact, we've read and agree that we may be Americans, even Pennsylvanians by birth, but West Virginia is by the grace of God. So before we get too serious, let me share a little tongue-in-cheek story that I posted a while ago on Facebook. I'll indulge me. A man in Topeka, Kansas, decided to write a book about churches around the country. So he started, he flew out to San Francisco, and he started working east from there. And he went to a very large church and began talking and taking photographs and making notes he spotted a golden telephone on the vestibule wall, and he was intrigued. There was a sign on it that read, calls $10,000 a minute. 
So he sought out the pastor, and he asked about that phone and the sign. And the pastor answered and said, well, this golden phone is in fact a direct line to heaven. And if you can pay the price, you can talk directly to God. The man thanked the pastor and continued on his way. And as he continued, he visited churches all over, Seattle, Houston, St. Louis, Chicago, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, and many cities and towns all around the United States. He found more phones, the same sign, the same answer from each pastor. But finally, he got to Newton, West Virginia, and he entered a small church there in our beautiful state, and he saw the usual golden telephone. But this time, the sign read, calls, 35 cents. Well, he was fascinated, so he asked to talk to the pastor. Reverend Father, I have been in cities all across the country, and in each church, I found this golden telephone. And I've been told it's a direct line to heaven and that I could talk to God. But in the other churches, the cost was $10,000 a minute. Your sign reads only 35 cents a call. Why? The pastor smiled broadly and replied, Son, you're in West Virginia now. You're in God's country, and it's a local call. <laughs> I thoroughly agree. I think we're on holy ground and we support it with blue and gold. It just bleeds. We do have much to celebrate. And I can remember as a little girl, I thought when I grew up, I would want to become a real nurse. That's actually what I thought RN meant. <laughs> My nursing education journey went from BSN to MSN to PhD to an adult nurse practitioner. And there have been wonderful opportunities open to me as a nurse. And they continue to evolve today as I work with interprofessional education and our colleagues. But that's enough about me. I want to talk to you. You've earned the right to begin and continue your careers in nursing through your ability and your hard work. The success of our WVU nursing alumni all over the world is living proof that access to higher education can and should be based on merit and not social class or age or money or any other constraints into which individuals are born. You will now continue a fascinating and rewarding journey into healthcare. A journey where you'll continue to expand your knowledge, skills, and horizons. And I encourage you to become lifelong learners. The MSN, the DNP, the PhD, they're all available once you get that BSN. It's time, though, for you to make mistakes. Don't be afraid. It's time to learn from them. It's time to take the wrong decisions and keep correcting them until that you're finally right and you're an uh, constructive, interactive person in your team, your healthcare team. So when people ask you, what do you really want to do in life? You won't have to think. You'll just know it. I want to be a nurse. Today's message came to me at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Many of you know that you'll get emails and Facebook postings from me, and any time is a good time to write. And besides, I heard you never have to change anything you get up in the middle of the night to write. <laughs> so I want to share with you a very short inspiration. Um, Dr. Smith asked me what I was going to talk about, and I said, it's something simple. It's the three C's for success. And she thought that was a good idea, because three C's would be easy to remember. The three C's for success I learned this last year, more from the patient side of the bed than, than from the nursing side. But I recognize the benefits of having a nurse who's competent, who can communicate, and who cares. So competence, that's your knowledge, your skills, your attitudes. And I have no doubt that you all have knowledge and skill and a positive attitude, or you wouldn't be graduating as a mountaineer nurse. We all know that you can't fully control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude, and in that, you can control the changes rather than allowing the change to control you. 
So put them together, your knowledge, your skills, your attitude, and competence will be your first key. Communication, the second key, is critical. Truly listen to your patients and colleagues and have the courage to say what you think. You could prevent suffering or save a life. The nurse who listened when my husband said, that doesn't look like the medicine I usually take, and did not give him Celexa, which is an antidepressant, when he should have had Celebrex for his arthritis. It wasn't life-threatening, but what if it was? What if it had been? And then this nurse took the time to share with us that she took next steps to see how that had happened. It was a compounded error of entry, transcription, filling the order. But I challenge you, how would you keep it from happening again? You're part of the team. You need to communicate. You're a key player on that team, but only if you take on the responsibility. So think and communicate. And remember, no speech can be totally bad if it's short enough, so I'll move on. <laughs> the third C is for caring. You've worked hard to master the arts and sciences that provide the basis for your practice, that provide what you can apply in your practice every day, the nursing concepts and theories that are our signature of a profession, professional nursing practice. And I know you've done this not just in the classrooms or laboratories or sim centers, but also in the living, noisy, sometimes precarious clinical environments of the hospital, the clinics, and the homes of the people of West Virginia. Those men, women, children, and families that you have cared for. It continues to be our challenge from our patients to take all that we have learned and somehow put it all together so we can see each person holistically with their body, their mind, their spirit, and a heart. Living in our complex society with our family, friends, and neighbors, you're the key. You have shown that you can do this or you wouldn't be sitting here. You'll be caring for some very sick patients with complex health care needs. You'll see hopeless cases, people with terminal illness who might die under your care. You can make it good for them. You can care for victims of senseless violence, abused men and women, children. You can do it because you have caring. The possibilities for you to make a difference are endless and I have confidence in you. You will meet the challenge. You'll hold on to your caring hearts while providing the excellent nursing care for which we're known. So together, these three Cs, competence, communication, and caring, can make a difference, the WVU difference. And I'd like to end with the quote from someone not a nurse, but who made a difference in our world. This was a Steve Jobs comment about courage to make changes in your life, and you're going forward and making changes. He said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of what other people think. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice, and most important, have the courage to follow your heart and your intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. So my warmest best wishes to all of you. Hopefully you'll remember some of the three C's and develop your and our healthcare future. So happy graduation. May you have a truly successful life. And let's go Mountaineer nurses. Uh, please accept this gift as our token of our appreciation for all that you've done for the school and for giving us that inspirational message, too. So. Thank you so much, Betty. <laughs> okay. 
I'd now like to introduce Joshua Stubbs, who will be singing My Home Among the Hills. That song always gives me goosebumps, so. <laughs> um, I'd now like to introduce Dr. Deborah Shelton, our Associate Dean for Research, for the presentation of the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Dr. Shelton? I am honored to present graduates who have earned the Doctor of Philosophy degree. The Doctorate of Philosophy degree is the highest academic degree awarded by a university and is a terminal re research degree. To earn a Doctorate of Philosophy degree requires extended study and in intense intellectual effort. Awardees master a specific subject matter completely and extend the body of the knowledge of that subject. The final product representing this body of knowledge is the dissertation. We will now hood the recipients earning this degree. Vera Barton Caro. Vera's dissertation was titled, I guess you give that to them, Embodied Revelation, Primary Prevention, Implantable Cardioverter Defibrillator. I gotta be able to say it, candidates grasping the threat of sudden cardiac death. And she's being hooded by her chair, Dr. Alveda Nathaniel. Marianne M. Harding. Marianne's dissertation was titled Predictors of Distress During the Breast Diagnostic Period, and she's being hooded by her chair, Susan, Dr. Susan McCrone.
Now Dr. Cynthia Persley, Associate Dean for Graduate Practice Programs, will pre present the candidates for the de degree Doctor of Nursing Practice. The Doctor of Nursing Practice is a terminal degree representing the highest level of nursing practice. Earning a Doctor of Nursing Practice requires intense immersion in the process of integrating knowledge into the practice experience. The final product is a capstone project centered on change relevant to a clinical practice problem. Our first graduate to be hooded is August 2012 graduate Crystal Sherman. Crystal's chair, Dr. Alana Chertok, is unable to be with us today, and in place, I will be hooding Crystal. Crystal's capstone title was Evaluation of an Educational Program to Prevent Hearing Loss in 4-H Members. Our second graduate to be hooded is December 2012 graduate Aaron Santemeyer, and he will be hooded by his chair, Dr. Alvita Nathaniel. Aaron's capstone title is the Effectiveness of Multifocal Training to Improve the Treatment of Community Acquired MRSA in Marion County. The following graduates to be announced are receiving their degrees for May 2013. Deborah Ancinelli. Deborah's capstone title is the effectiveness of a structured telephone support program for rural patients with heart failure, and she is being hooded by her chair, Dr. Susan McCrone. Pamela Edens. Pamela's capstone title is an evaluation of the Idaho plate method for adults with type 2 diabetes and limited health literacy in rural West Virginia. And she is being hooded by her chair, Dr. Kari Sanjeklin. Evelyn Martin. Evelyn's capstone title is Evaluation of the Effectiveness of the International Index of Erectile Function Questionnaire on the Diagnosis and Treatment of Erectile Dysfunction. And she is being hooded by her chair, Dr. Susan McCrone. Robert Wynn. Robert's capstone title is the effectiveness of an educational program on recognition of atypical signs and symptoms of acute coronary syndrome in women in the emergency room. And he is being hooded by his chair, Dr. Susan McCrone. We will now have presentation of the candidates who have fulfilled all of the course requirements for the degree Master of Science in Nursing. 
They have been prepared in the advanced practice of nursing at the master's level. This education includes a substantive theoretical perspective and a commitment to make a difference in the quality of life of those they serve in specific nursing practice roles. The candidates are Monique Johnville Bandy. Josette Francois Batsonikos. <laughs> Catherine Lorraine Borelli. <laughs> Jessica Ann Campbell. Jessica Lee Costello. Janae Ladon Quartz. Melanie Elaine Dinsmore. Matea Beth Drennan. Elizabeth Ashley Fowler. Stephanie K. Garcia. Christy Lynn Glass. <laughs> Ashley Beth Golden. <laughs> Rebecca Marie Hebel. Brianne Holly Henson. Chad Taylor Hutt. Casey Renee Legg. Susan Michelle Lovejoy. Christian Allen Marquise. Anne Elise McBurney. Ashley Michelle Price. Susan Jill Rogers. Audrey Brooke Royce. Valerie Marie Salerno. Brooke Ellen Starcher. Tracy Lane Tannehill.
Kayla Renee Watson. TJ Weimerskirch. And now we will recognize the Postmasters Certificate recipients. These are individuals who already hold a master's degree, but who completed a certificate in advanced practice nursing. Kara J. Terhoon. I would now like to introduce Dr. Roger Carpenter, who will present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. The Bachelor of Science in Nursing graduate is prepared to practice nursing from a holistic caring framework using an evidence base to promote safe, quality patient care in a variety of healthcare settings, caring for diverse populations across the lifespan and the health illness continuum. I am honored to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Jamie Lee Afinito, cum laude. Bethany Page Andrew. <laughs> Heidi Nicole Anglin, cum laude. Mary Elizabeth A. Rose, magna cum laude. <laughs> Allison Carolyn Bonick. Micah Rochelle Ballard. <laughs> Megan Ashley Barrar, cum laude. Cassie Lynn Bell, magna cum laude. Kristen Melissa Bertha. Erica Danielle Beveridge. Blake Aaron Bogus, summa cum laude.
Lindsay Renee Boyer, magna cum laude. Melanie Lynn Brown, cum laude. Andrea Ann Brunswick. Courtney Lee Burton. <laughs> Rebecca Ruth Kane, summa cum laude. Amy Elizabeth Karlstrom, summa cum laude. Emily Diane Carpenter, magna cum laude. Taylor Morgan Chambers, cum laude. Allison Marie Clark, summa cum laude. Sarah Grace Klein. <laughs> Samantha Renee Copeland, magna cum laude. Susan Kerr Cornett, magna cum laude. <laughs> Samantha Marie Cress. Shannon Mary Egan. <laughs> Lauren Ray Egerud, magnum cum laude. Monique Marie Ercolano, cum laude. <laughs> Catherine Lavon Estep, cum laude. Molly Ann Federal, magna cum laude.
Kelly Lynn Fadaza, summa cum laude. Angela Beth Fitzwater, summa cum laude. Shirley Joanne Francis, cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Fry, magna cum laude. Maggie Christine Graham, magna cum laude. Michael David Greer. Abigail Grace Harden, cum laude. Autumn Joe Holmes. Catherine Elizabeth Holt, summa cum laude. Matresa Renee Hovatter, magna cum laude. Brittany Nicole Hunter. <laughs> Lindsay Schaefer Ketson, cum laude. Kelsey Elizabeth Klug, magna cum laude. <laughs> Rebecca Suzanne Knobloch, magna cum laude. Kelsey Renee Lawrence, magna cum laude. <laughs> Heather Nicole Lynch. Elizabeth Morgan Mabe. <laughs> Rebecca Ray Mallow. Caitlin Nicole Mancuso, magna cum laude. <laughs> T. 
Tiffany Lee McBride. Kara Marie Myers, cum laude. <laughs> Jerrica Taylor Miller, magna cum laude. Jane Ann Montebell. <laughs> Rebecca Jean Owen, cum laude. Alexis Marie Petito. <laughs> Kara Ann Pettit, summa cum laude. Kayla Elizabeth Pump, cum laude. Audra Emily Praskowitz. Kristen Jean Ramsey, magna cum laude. Amy Nicole Rapp, magna cum laude. Haley Lane Remish. <laughs> Whitney Nicole Rhodes, summa cum laude. Sambina Teresa Rochella, cum laude. <laughs> Elizabeth Danielle Sevilla, magna cum laude. Stephanie Lynn Seitz. <laughs> Trisha Marie Smith. Sarah Ann Staley, summa cum laude.
Taylor Nicole Stewart, cum laude. Eric Nathan Stepik, cum laude. Emily Nicole Strife, magna cum laude. Lori Rebecca Strother. Grace Taylor Suttup, cum laude. Rachel Ann Sunyak, summa cum laude. Amanda Lee Swaggerty, cum laude. <laughs> Rachel Renee Sween. Shannon Aaron Thompson, cum laude. <laughs> Dominique Hope Valdez Estep. Mary Catherine West, cum laude. Alexandra Lee Williams. Melanie Suzanne Williams, magna cum laude. Erin Marie Yont, summa cum laude. Dunitsa Alexandra Sotezalo, cum laude. I now have the honor of presenting the candidates who anticipate completing the degree requirements for Bachelor of Science in Nursing in August 2013. Emily Ray Belcher. <laughs> Allison Renee Carter. Stephanie Ann Caruso. <laughs> Dale Thomas Childs.
Alyssa Brooke Croston. Elizabeth Culberson. Lauren De Palma. Danielle Marie Ercolano. Laura Lee Garlitz. Shannon Marie Gilbertson. Brianna Nicole Gurick. Christopher Elton Hall. Carolyn F. Lovano. Gina Joe Roy. Anne Noel Lucky Wald. Samantha Lynn Ludwig. Emily Elizabeth Moore. Omalara Oganada. Helen Rochelle Riffle. <laughs> Carolyn K. Riggleman. Katie Jo Robinson. <laughs> Lara Joy Scarton. Tanya K. Skidmore. Kimberly Ann Smith.
Courtney Stevens. Danielle Stolfi. Austin Thomas. Alicia I. Thompson. Kyla Danielle Wright. Please join me in congratulating all of our graduates. And now Chancellor Kalenda will confer the degrees. Thank you. Will the candidates from the School of Nursing please rise? Your field is critically important, one that improves people's physical and mental well-being every day. Nurses bring to their work a thorough theoretical knowledge combined with critical thinking ability, communication skills, compassion, and empathy. Helping people maintain and restore their good health is a tremendous responsibility. And as you take on this responsibility, I trust that you will adopt the highest standards of professionalism and hold foremost in your thoughts and plans the patients that you serve. As West Virginia University graduates, always aspire to put your education to work exploring our world's greatest problems. Continue to cultivate your global awareness and aim to create a more peaceful and just world. Constantly refine your abilities to uncover facts, analyze problems, and communicate clearly. Dream big and never stop learning. Share your pride in West Virginia University wherever you go and act as an ambassador in the life-changing power of education. So by virtue of the authority vested in me by the West Virginia University Board of Governors, I hear, hereby confer upon you the degrees for which you have been recommended with all the rights, honors, privileges appertaining thereto. As West Virginia Uni University's newest graduates, bachelors may move your tassels to the left side of your cap as a symbol of your personal achievement. Please join me in congratulating our newest graduates. be seated. I would now like to introduce Dr. Joy Maramba, who will present the alumni charge. On behalf of all the graduates of the university who have preceded you, I extend to each member of the class of 2013 Congratulations and best wishes. You, today, you are joining a legacy of success that reaches back almost 150 years. Over that time, WVU graduates have succeeded in almost every field of human endeavor. They have been heroes in battle. They have lifted our spirits through the arts. 
They have revolutionized technology. They have saved lives. They have committed themselves to public service. They have explored the mysteries of our universe. They have built business enterprises that employ thousands. They have nurtured society's next generation. The story of each graduate is unique. WVU has given you the tools to succeed, but you must each find your own path to success. With that in mind, I offer this charge to you, the class of 2013. As you enter one phase of your career, start learning what you need to advance to the next stage. When you set goals, be flexible, and don't be afraid to change your plan if circumstances warrant it. As you work toward your goals, don't forget to spend time nurturing relationships. As you develop your unique gifts, apply them in ways that make our world better. When you have to choose between thinking like the crowd or thinking for yourself, choose to be an innovator. When you have the chance to explore a new place or a new perspective, take it. As you travel the world, wear your flying West Virginia with pride. And when people ask where you learn to succeed, tell them you're a mountaineer. Once again, congratulations to you, West Virginia University's class of 2013. Thank you. I would now like to introduce the outstanding PhD student, Mary Ann Harding, Dr. Mary Ann Harding, for her far farewell to the class. Thank you, Dr. Shelton. Well, as Chancellor Kalinda said, I have the honor to speak with you today, knowing that you're really not going to remember a word I'm going to say. You will remember how it feels to graduate because actually you've been thinking about this day since the first day you started at WVU. And now that you've been through mountains of readings and tests and clinicals and projects and theses, you have the feelings of triumph for how it feels to finally graduate. And there'll be pictures from today, I guess in a webcast, to reinforce the memories of the exact moment you received your diploma and started on your career as a nurse and the new beginnings of a career for some of us. But years from now, when someone asks you how long you've been a nurse, that you will remember without difficulty because becoming a nurse and being a nurse is so much more than a diploma. It really is part of your identity. I began my career as a nurse 26 years ago and things have changed a little bit since then. When I graduated back then, I wore a white dress and a white nurse's cap. Um, all the charting was by hand, and tuition was, uh, I looked, $40 a credit hour. I had big plans, too. I was going to work in the ICU, and I was going to continue on my education. And so now I find myself graduating again, and I can say, well, I did fulfill some of those plans. I did work in ICU, but also oncology, and now I teach. Um, I worked in a clinic for the homeless. Um, computers are now a big part of healthcare, and I am very happy to say my education is complete because tuition is more than $40 a credit hour now. But through all of my experiences, nursing became part of who I am, just as it will for you. Um, the rewards of being a nurse don't change. Our commitment to caring, to integrity, to excellence, those are a part of who we are. And through, through the years, you'll specifically remember very um, times that you've touched someone's lives, you will remember if you go to teach students who you made a difference, you'll remember those patients that you felt who you ministered to, that your caring is what made the difference in that patient's life. As I say, I remember when I became a nurse, and I have big plans again, just as all of you do now. Um, I hope from here the direction my career will go. Um, I'm very excited about the opportunities that West Virginia University has offered me. And I can just say that, well, if I can't remember graduating today, that's okay, because we have pictures of that. Um, so Godspeed to you all.
And now the outstanding DNP student, Dr. Aaron Santmeyer, will present his farewell to the class. Don't squander your words or your thoughts. Consider even the simplest action you take. For your life and the, those lives you come in contact, contact with matter, and they matter beyond measure, and they matter forever. Andy Andrews. Nursing is a calling that provides each of us with an opportunity to not squander our words, thoughts, or actions. Daily, each of us are gifted with the opportunities to impact individuals' lives by practicing the very ethos of nursing, caring. One, so one such opportunity I had was going down the Manobulu River in southwest Madagascar. We were using a hovercraft to reach uh, a village with a message of faith, hope, and love by caring for the villagers' various needs. This remote village had never had out outside white visitors like me, but they were struggling. They had health needs, and they needed someone to come. They had sent a messenger who traveled for, for many days to request help. To get to the village required us to land on a runway that also doubled as a, a cow pasture, crossing a, a croc-infested creek and a dugout canoe that was not made for big people like me. We got into the hovercraft. When we got into the hovercraft, the pilot was learning to drive, and we ran into a tree. We ran into some houses. Um, and he kept saying, sorry, that covered over everything, sorry. We marooned it in the middle of the river as the villagers were laughing at us, taking such a long time, we probably could have walked there faster. While the passengers, me included, were praying that we were not going to be the lucky crocodile's next meal as we tumbled into the river many times. Once we arrived at the village, we were greeted by the, the villagers and we began to wade through the mud. As we wade through the mud, I began to feel things crawling through my legs. And I said, what are those things crawling through my legs? And they said, oh, those are the, those are the boa constrictors. They love laying in the mud, and the mud is, is um, very warm, but don't worry when they bite, they're not poisonous. Eventually, we arrived, and we greeted them, and we cared for the various health needs. You might be asking, why would someone do this? Because each life matters, and each life matters beyond measure, forever. It was on this trip that I decided that if I was going to risk my life, I wanted to provide superior care to all and to whomever I came in contact with. When I made it back to town, back to the internet, I began the process of rowing in the, the DMP program at WVU. Each of our stories, adventures, and experiences that describe how we arrived at this day in our life story are diverse. Our stories from this point on will also be distinctive as each of us continues to write our individual memoir that is both rich in content and has been mentioned is unique in experience. However, for a few short years, our stories have been intertwined for a purpose and a reason. We worked together, we studied together, we encouraged each other, and at times maybe we cried together as we completed the IRB or the brand process. And today we have arrived at this graduation, importantly, together. And it is together that we will face a healthcare system that is rapidly changing. The changing of our healthcare system is inevitable. And we must choose to leverage these changes to benefit each individual we care for. Because we have resolved in our hearts that each life matters beyond measure forever. These continuing changes will provide boundless opportunities and significant challenges. In, those, in these moments of opportunity and challenge, let us not forget what Andy Andrews wrote, that intention without action is an insult to those who expect the best from us. Intention without action is an insult to those who expect the best from us. Let it be said of the graduating class of 2013 that we are nurses of action, not nurses of only good intentions, that we honor those who expect the best from us, our families who have supported us, the university which has guided us, our professors who have invested in us, and our patients who are depending on us. Let the class of 2013 honor our families, the university, our professors, and all those who have invested in our lives by purposing in our hearts to provide superior care to all those who cross our path. We can impact the world one life at a time because each of us matter, and we matter beyond measure, and our life matters. 
forever. Let us remember that our destination is not determined by our direction, that our direction is determined by our actions, that our actions of today determine the story we will tell tomorrow. And the story we will tell tomorrow must provide evidence that we were not educated beyond our actions, but rather we leveraged every ounce of mountaineer education we received to provide revolutionary care to all. And when all else fails, remember your life matters beyond measure, and the lives you care for matter beyond measure forever. Thank you. And now the outstanding MSN student, Audrey Royce, will present her farewell to the class. My goodness, if I wasn't nervous before, following a speech about boa constrictors and crocodiles, I will grab your attention somehow. Um, on behalf of the WU Masters um, in the Science of Nursing, graduating class of 2013, I want to deeply thank those special people in our lives that have supported, loved, and encouraged us along the way. To our family and friends, we would not be here today without your unwavering support. Thank you for believing in us and for pushing us to continue through times when we doubted ourselves. I know that we all appreciate that you allowed us to practice asking you many health history questions and practicing physical examinations night after night for weeks straight last year. To the School of Nursing faculty, it takes a special person to be a nurse and even more so to be a nurse and a teacher. So thank you for doing both so well. Our minds have been challenged, inspired, and forever changed by you. Despite our never-ending questions and high anxiety states throughout the semesters, you have been wonderful mentors and role models. Finally, to the graduating class of 2013, take this moment and cherish it. All of the countless hours of studying, clinical rotations, and case studies have finally paid off. As future practitioners, we will take care of men and women, children and the elderly, the ill and the healthy. I truly believe that each patient that you care for will leave better off than when they entered your exam room. We have the best evidence-based practice guidelines at our fingertips. And by fingertips, yes, I mean literally using our fingertips to access medical information on our phones and iPads. <laughs> Remember that although we are new graduates, we have studied and we have trained hard and have been taught well throughout this program. We must know and utilize our resources. We know that patients benefit from collaborative health care. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that we support our colleagues and other healthcare professionals in our community. Some of us have been nurses for years and others for decades, and we understand that we will be forever learning and making strides to improve the care that our patients receive. I believe that each graduate is ready to step into our new role as advanced practice nurses. Congratulations to all of you on this magnificent achievement, and good luck in all of your future endeavors. And now Amy Carlstrom, who's the outstanding BSN student, will present her farewell to the class. First off, I would like to thank our family and friends for your love, support, and encouragement throughout this experience. I'm sure you are all very tired of hearing about how hard the tests are and how, about how absolutely exhausted we are. But don't worry, the end has come. I think we can, I can speak for all of us and that we could not have survived this the last few years without each and every one of you. I would also like to thank the faculty here at the School of Nursing for all of the hard work and effort they have put into making us the wonderful nurses we are soon to be. You pushed us to the brink of our personal abilities, which we may not have been so appreciative at the time, but are now very thankful as we are beginning our careers. The passion you have for providing patient-centered care will forever be embedded in each of our practices. And to the class of 2013, we started nursing school as normal college students with absolutely no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Little did we know how many care plans, ATI tests, nursing diagnoses, late nights, and very early mornings were in our future. Many of us were also unaware of how rewarding, satisfying, and purposeful this path would be. We are now ending this journey as strong, courageous, critical thinkers ready to make a difference in the world. I couldn't leave nursing school without quoting our favorite founder of modern nursing, Florence Nightingale. She once said, nursing is an art, and if it is to be made an art, it requires an exclusive devotion 
as hard a preparation as any painter or sculptor's work. One thing that can be guaranteed is that there will be many ups and downs in our lives, but always remember to let your mountaineer spirit shine because after all, once a mountaineer, always a mountaineer. Again, congratulations and good luck with your future endeavors. We want to be sure and thank our musicians who have made the event so special today, Marguerite Bostonian and Joshua Stubbs and the sign language interpreter. A special thanks to the School of Nursing staff who arranged this event, Misty Woldemichal, Brandy Toothman, Loretta Reckert, Kim McCourt, Kathy Batt, Lori Stowers, Michelle Wenguin, and Robin Warbell. We certainly could not have done all of this without them. Um, Joshua Stubbs will now lead us in the alma mater, and I ask that all stand for the singing of the alma mater. ask our guests to remain seated until the graduates have exited the room um, and we now ask the stage party faculty and graduates to rise for the recessional. <laughs> 